My name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome into our latest episode of our Excel to Power BI series here on YouTube. For this video, I'm gonna take a look at one of the great features that exists inside of the Power BI service at powerbi.com called Analyze in Excel. Now what Analyze in Excel allows us to do is take all the work that we've built throughout the process of either starting in Excel or in Power BI to develop a data model, we can now look at that data model back in Excel by connecting to it through this Power BI feature. So without further ado, let's take a look at a report that was published out to my Power BI service and then see how we can leverage Analyze in Excel. Now for this report, we're working with some airline data. Now this data set is basically trying to get a good feel or a good idea about how um, airlines have been doing across time as far as um, the number of airlines that are, are populating in different areas throughout either the United States or internationally, the number of flights they have, the average distance they have per flight or per airline as well, and just the general miles um, that they tend to cover on each individual flight. Now, the way that we can really take this data set and then pull it back into Excel to be able to build those, build those amazing pivot tables, pivot charts that we really love to have that we use throughout our entire career is by using a feature again called Analyze in Excel. Now to look at this feature, what we wanna do is first we can need to find out exactly where it is. And so if you want to leverage this feature, you need to come either here on our report or inside of the data set itself. So I'll showcase both ways to get to it. But we want to leverage right here where it says export, analyze in Excel. Now here again, this is on the report page itself, on the report itself. But if we wanted to do this inside of the data set for this, we can go into our data set, select our ellipses here, and also choose to analyze in Excel right there. Now, with all that being said, the important thing that we want to make sure we are doing is we need to make sure first that we've downloaded the availability feature of analyze in Excel before we even try this process. Now, in order to download that, what you'll need to do is you'll need to navigate all the way up here to our download area, that, that button right there. And once you select that, you'll see that we have Analyze in Excel updates. Now, when we use Analyze in Excel updates, what this will do is just simply, first of all, if you've never done it before, download this availability feature for you. Or if you've already done this in the past, it will look for any new updates available to you to be able to use and leverage this feature here inside of the Power BI service. So again, this is the first place you need to make sure you go to, especially if this is something you've never done before. And so I'm gonna select Analyze in Excel Updates. And then what you'll get is this pop-up here that tells you to go ahead and download Analyze in Excel. So you can go ahead and connect back into this data model or this cube, if you will, to be able to build out your pivot tables and pivot charts and slicers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select download. And when I do that, it's going to go ahead and put it somewhere on my device here. And I've done this before, but I'm gonna get the newest version of this. I'm gonna open up my download there. And it's gonna ask me, of course, mine opens up on another window. There it is to go through the process of downloading this. Now, I already have this again, so I'm gonna go ahead and repair the current one that I have and go through the whole process of installing. Now, it's usually relatively quick to install this feature. Notice that mine's gone pretty fast there. And I can go ahead and select Finish. And so now, once that I've done this, I can now go ahead and use Analyze in Excel. Now, I will put out, that there are in some cases that you will have to get administrative rights in order to download this. So check with your organization, check with any type of admin uh, credentials you may need in order to go ahead and get this process started for yourself. And now that we have that ready to go, we can come here to export and choose to analyze in Excel. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And what it's gonna do is it's going to create this Excel file that we can put, I'm just gonna put here on my desktop for, uh, for today. And I'm gonna to hit save. And so now what I can do is I can open up this Excel file. And of course it always opens up on another screen here as I'm recording. 
I can open up this Excel file and connect back to that Power BI data set. Now it's super important that if we want to be able to build out here, connecting to that Power BI data set, that we first enable editing and enable content for every connection to be established. And now once we've done that, what you'll see here on the far right side is our pivot table field, just as you would see normally when you're building out a pivot table in Excel, except all of the data we are using for these pivot tables are from that Power BI data set. We're connecting back into that Power BI data set to be able to build here. So you're not going to see any of the data here in a table. You're not gonna see the rows, the columns in this case. You'll just see the different options we have to populate our pivot table. And one of the other things to note is that as we go through this process, we are also gonna be able, because we're using a Power BI data set and the Power BI data model that was built in Power Query, we're gonna be able to leverage more than the Excel row limit. So more than that 1,040 something thousand row limit that exists here inside of Excel. Now, for our pivot tables, because we have these built on our Power BI data model, it is worth noting some of the, the, the different things we have to choose from here in our pivot table fields. Now, one of the things to note is the difference between these two sections, this top section here and this bottom section here. Okay, starting with this top section, these are all of the measures that were created that were created with DAX, okay? Created with that data analysis expression language that is um, used in Power BI to, to create those calculated measures. Down here, all of these are our attribute tables. Okay, these are essentially the dimension tables that we're gonna be pulling through. So anytime we want to populate anything into our values for our pivot table, those are gonna come from our measure section right here. And then everything within our rows and columns will come from our attribute tables. So let's go ahead and populate a pivot table right away to see the data that we're pulling from Power BI. Now for this first one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to see our number of flights and say maybe our average flight distance by area, by geography. So we can go ahead and do that by first selecting our, uh, our rows that we wanna pull in. So I think it's in here in our airport table. We have a geography hierarchy that we can pull in. And one of the great things as we know about pivot tables, we can use these hierarchies throughout. So there we have it starting there. And then what we'll also see is we can pull in from our on-time performance measures, the different measures we have created using DAX. Now for this one, we have one that is number of flights. Perfect right there. And we also have average flight distance in miles. So it gives us a good feel of you know, how we can see our data here, similar to what we had back in Power BI, those different visuals we had Power BI, but we can really see them here with our pivot tables and of course a pivot chart. And so because we have a pivot table, we have that ability to drill down deeper into other areas as we go into more the, the more granular level here for the United States if we want to see that data. We can always go back up if we want. And so what we can also do, of course, is build out a pivot chart. So let's go ahead and build out a pivot chart and we'll insert a pivot chart here in Excel. And so for this pivot chart, let's go ahead and we come on over here to our pivot chart right there. In order to populate this pivot chart, because we need to make sure we're, we're using the same data model, we need to make sure every time if we're using this from Power BI, we are using an external data source. And the external data source, once we select that and we have to choose our connection, will be the Power BI data set or the cube that was developed in Power BI. So I'm gonna choose my connection and when I do that, you'll see the connections in, that are currently established within this workbook. Now we have this connection because we did this all from Power BI. We chose to bring it in from Power BI. And so there is my Power BI connection. There's my cube, my data model that I want to use for my pivot chart. And I can select open. 
and then choose where I want to create the pivot chart. For the sake of this report, I'm going to keep it on this existing worksheet. And then I'm going to hit OK. And once I do that, it will populate our pivot table somewhere in the middle here. There it is. I can move it around here. Actually, I'm going to make there and move it up a little bit higher there. And for our pivot chart in this case, we can see maybe um, we'll do like number of flights by our group name, our distance group names, somewhat similar to our Power BI visual here that we want to repopulate from this waterfall chart. So we'll go ahead and choose our number of flights and we'll take our distance group name and populate it there. So we can see the from the different distance groups there, how many flights they've populated, we can see all of those different ones that we have there. And we can also rename this as if we want to um, number of flights by distance group. Okay, nice and simple there. If we want to get rid of this total, we can also come into our chart elements and remove our legend there. So we have a little bit more real estate to work with. Now, one of the great features that we have here with Excel by using Analyze in Excel is not only can we create pivot tables and pivot charts from that, that Power BI data model, we can also add in a slicer to this. And so if we want to add in a slicer, we can just select any space here and one of these cells that we want to leverage. And for that, if we go ahead and insert a slicer, very easily, we can just select that slicer right there choose where that slicer is going to populate data from, which connection we are going to use with that slicer. Just simply hit open because that's the connection we want to have. And then choose which column we want to put in our slicer. It's that easy. And so if we want to go through, maybe I want to do a slicer by calendar year. So I want to do all these by our year. And so there we have our slicer that we can use to populate our visuals. Now, if we wanna see how this works and select one of these years, if I select 2009, it should filter down the other visuals, but there's a problem right here. And then this is an often, this is a problem that we see when we're trying to collect, connect slicers to the visuals. Unlike with Power BI, this slicer is not automatically connected into those two visuals. What we need to do is establish that connection between the slicer and our two visuals here in Excel in order for them to work. So in order to do that, we need to right click on the slicer itself and go into our report connections. And here in our report connections, we need to make sure we declare which visuals should be connected to the slicer. So I want both of these to be connected. So I can hit okay. Now, I often get this message as well. This is another uh, Excel warning here of a connection error. And this connection, is, this connection error is around the evaluated calculated members from the OLAP server and fi filters. Okay, We must have the same setting across all tables in order to be connected to the slicer. So what that means is we need to turn on those connections from the visual themselves as well, as well as the slicer too. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit okay. And then we can go ahead and right click on our pivot table, go into our pivot table options, and then in our totals and filters, we want to select evaluate calculated members from OLAP servers and filters. That exact warning, there it is. We wanna turn that on right there in order for these to be connected. I'm gonna hit select that and hit okay. Now I'll do it for my pivot chart just in case. I have a feeling it's already connected, but I wanna do it just in case anyway. So I'll right click, do the same thing, pivot chart options. We'll go into our totals and filters. Yep, and I thought so. It was already connected in this case. So we should be set with that. So now if I select a different year, there's 2008, we should be able to, oh, it's still not working because I need to go back and make sure our report connections again in our slicer are enabled. There they are. And now if I do it, let's see, and now it's going to start to filter down. There's 2012. Now we can start to populate. There's 2010, 2011. 
So now our slicer is working. We can go ahead and use that across the different years that are available to us for us to be able to um, you know, see our data here in Excel. Now, one of the additional features here that I did want to point out before we go for today is if we have everything in Power BI already established there, we can pull it in using Analyze in Excel. However, there is another way to pin or to leverage our data model in Power BI here in Excel without going through that entire process. And that way is to go ahead and, and connect out to that Power BI data set from inside of Excel itself. Now, in order to do that, we need to go up here to our data tab. And in our data tab, if we select get data, we can choose right here, and you'll notice mine's from my office here at Pragmatic Works. We can choose right there to connect straight into a Power BI data set. And so if we do that, we will then be able to choose all of the different Power BI data sets that we have at the Power BI service, that we have access to at Power BI service, that we want to populate here inside of Excel. You'll notice I have quite a few for all the different classes that I teach, but you can choose any one of these to connect into to go ahead and build out more pivot tables or pivot charts, however you want them to be. All right, guys, thanks for joining me again today. Hopefully this video was helpful for you to understand how to use Analyze in Excel from our Power BI service into Excel to be able to build out those amazing pivot tables and pivot charts that we love to have. As a quick reminder, not only do I have my series here and all the videos here on YouTube, but at Pragmatic Works, we also have our on-demand learning platform where we have over 70 different courses available to you, not just on Power BI, which we have about 20 on Power BI itself, but also on all of the Microsoft Power Platform and with Azure and T-SQL, SSIS, including Excel as well. So take a look at our on-demand platform if you really wanna get a full scale base ready to go with your skill set and everything you're looking forward to learning. Well, thanks for joining me again, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.